Hexene reacts with Br2 to produce 3,4-dibromohexane. Why is it 3,4? Because the bromine atoms are on 1, 2, carbon 3 and carbon 4. It says describe with the aid of curly arrows. So the important bit is curly arrows. The movement of electrons in the mechanism. So it tells you curly arrows show you where electrons go. It says show the intermediate, any relative dipoles, and lone pairs of electrons. So this is an electrophilic addition. So the bromine is going to add across to the double bond. So first things first, it says show the relevant dipoles. So, as the bromine gets close to the double bond, the double bond contains lots of electrons, it becomes polarised. Opposite things attract. So imagine there's lots of electrons there, so it's going to induce a dipole into the bromine. It's going to attract a bit of the bromine that becomes delta positive. It induces the dipole. It makes the bromine delta positive. So the bottom one must be delta negative. And that happens when it gets close to the double bond. What then happens? Well, it says, it says show the curly arrows. So if I show the curly arrows in blue... They go from the area of high electron density to the area of low electron density. So they go from the double bond onto the bromine. And then this bond here breaks and those electrons go onto the bottom delta negative bromine. What do we have next? Well, for argument's sake, let's say that bromine is going to add on to the left-hand carbon atom. So if I draw it out as carbon, carbon, that hydrogen is going to be that hydrogen. That C2H5 is that C2H5, and then that bromine is on there. What have we got left on this carbon, on the right-hand side? Well, we have a hydrogen, we have a C2H5, but that carbon there had four electrons in that shell. It gave one electron to that bond, one, one electron to that bond, two, one electron to the top bit of the double bond, three, and one electron to the bottom bit of the double bond. Four. Both of the electrons from that bottom bit of the double bond have gone to make that bond there. So that carbon all of a sudden doesn't have the right number of electrons. It's missing an electron. And if it's missing an electron, it's going to be positive. What then happens is, well, look at the bromine. The bromine in the bottom took both the electrons from that bond. So all of a sudden it's got an extra electron. So that's going to be Br minus, and it says show lone pairs. So it's going to have a lone pair. So both of the electrons from that bond have gone to make that lone pair there. Does that make sense? Well, over here on the left-hand side, there are no charges in that molecule. There's no full delta positive, there are full, no full positives or negatives. Over here, the overall stuff in the reaction is going to be neutrally charged. There's a positive and negative. So we haven't lost any electrons. A word to the wise is, when you're doing a reaction mechanism, is there should be the same number of positive and negatives on one side as the other. If not, check your charges. You've probably done something wrong. If you find your charges don't add up, you've lost electrons. And that means you've made a mistake somewhere. So to complete this, we need to have the lone pair from the Br- attacking the C+. This is called a carbocation. And it goes from negative to positive, and that gives us our product the 3,4-dibromohexane.